Hey, Creative Coding. This is Adam Bachman. Uh, you are now tuning in to Creative Coding, a course from Maryland Institute College of Art. This is session 11. Today's date is April 13th, 2020, and we are all staying home. <clears throat> I'm going to be back here in about three minutes. And we're going to get started today. We're going to talk about putting sketches online using the P5JS creative coding framework. See you here in just a minute. Oh no, ha <laughs> ha, I was muted. Thank you to Kalen who let me know that I was completely muted. I have a physical mute button on my microphone. I have a software mute button on the broadcasting software. We're together, I'm a little more together than last week but not perfect. Today we're gonna to be talking about putting our sketches online. This is session 11. The presentation and the assignment file are both in the class Google Drive. So if you're in my class, you have access to them. If you don't, it's okay. I'm gonna show the presentation on screen and I'm gonna walk through all the code on screen. So you're not gonna miss anything. There's a link at the top left corner of your screen that bit.ly slash mica codes 2020 will take you to the class uh, code directory where you'll be able to see some of the examples that we work on uh, that I work on on stream after the class finishes if you are in my class and you know one of your friends from class is around but not tuning in have them tune in it's good to catch it in real time, but these videos are also going to go up here on Twitch TV and the class uh, YouTube channel. And eventually there will be some other links if you're not able to reach either of those. But if you're not able to reach either of those, you would not see this message. All right, let's dig in. Today I have 
I think three goals. What does it mean to be online? I'm going to use some phrases to kind of express the idea of being online. Uh, what we're talking about. Two phrases, other people's computers, and the conversation. These things are not uh, deep and critical for you to know as far as technologies, as far as if you don't know about these things, you will have trouble writing code, writing creative code with P5.js. Uh, but these two ideas for me are kind of at the center of the tools we're going to be using from here through the rest of the semester today and the three weeks afterwards uh, other people's computers the conversation you'll hear them a lot i'm going to talk about writing code with p5.js instead of the processing app i'm going to do three example programs i'm going to convert them i'm going to talk about what i'm doing uh, there are three programs that are going to kind of increase in complexity. We're going to try to duplicate in P5.js some of the things that were pretty easy to do with the processing app, but are a little trickier to do with P5.js. The tools are a little different. The ideas are the same, but it's just a little more complicated. So three examples. I'm going to talk about downloading code onto your machine. Uh, you'll hear when we talk about what does it mean to be online, uh, where is my code, where is it running, who controls it, who can see it. Downloading the code onto your machine, it'll make sense. And sharing. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the homework. When we finish this stream, we'll move to Zoom. I'll open up that Zoom meeting. Uh, but that will really, this week, that's going to be a lot more about Q&A. Uh, do you have any questions for me about the project that was due today? Do you have any questions for me about the examples you saw in class? And do you have any questions for me about the homework? And ideally, if you've got a free hour, uh, that Zoom call would be a chance to just get the homework done. It's not that hard. Not not that much pressure. Uh, but we'll get there. We'll get there. That's the third point. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be done in about hour and a half, less than two hours. Uh, I can see a timer running. I've been going about eight minutes. I really want to be done before two hours so we can eat lunch. If you're watching in real time, uh, eat dinner. If you're watching in real time and want to eat a meal uh, and mostly so we can wrap up but this stream will be a little bit longer if uh, you need to get up get up if you want to go away and come back and watch it in the recording so you can skip around or watch it on one and a half speed or 2x speed feel free uh, I literally cannot stop you why bring our work online all right Let's get started. I'm not going to tell you too much. This is a question that I'm going to leave open. Uh, personally, I like having an open question. Uh, struggling a little bit with not having an answer. Uh, hopefully painting a picture of enough ideas that when you ask this question, you can find an answer for yourself that makes sense. Uh, even if your answer is because the homework assignment said my work has to be online, I want to put it online. Uh, but I want to talk about the shape and space we're working in a little bit of what is online. Cause what is online even, uh, we saw last week, I gave this example. This is my favorite example, uh, uh, metaphor in the world. I'm going to try something a little different today. I have a whiteboard. The internet is a wire. Uh, let's see. All right. The internet is a wire. Have you 
it goes to infinity in either direction. Everybody who connects to it. My laptop at home. Uh, this thing here is a cloud. That's where Google and Amazon and Netflix and Facebook live. And I got a phone. Phones even look like that anymore. I don't know. That's terrible. That's a phone. Now that's a phone. There we go. Your phone's on the internet, it's on the wire. Your laptop's on the internet, it's on the wire. The internet is a wire. Now an important thing to remember about the internet, about the wire that is the internet, is there are some pieces of this system uh, that are kind of your computer, that are kind of my computer. But most of this system are other people's computers. When we put our work online, our work lives on other people's computers. Just browsing around, we're gonna get a little bit of taste of other people's computers today. If you are watching this right now, uh, I exist in a digital form on your computer, which is pretty weird. It's not my computer, I don't control it, I can't control how you receive it, but you do see it and you do hear me. This work lives on other people's computers. The work we create when we work in P5JS is on other people's computers. When you send an email, that email moves through other people's computers. When you post to social media, that post almost immediately leaves your device, leaves your laptop, and is going to other people's computers. When you read the news, you find the news on other people's computers. There is no cloud. This picture, this picture is beautiful because this word cloud kind of came around, uh, let's call it 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And everybody went nuts. The cloud. Businesses need to put their data on the cloud. Employees can do their work on the cloud. I got news. There is no cloud. There is only other people's computers. I hit two buttons at once. I ruined it. There was a, a real cool effect there. All right. Other people's computers. Now, the fun part of doing this work digital creation, sharing our digital creations and other people's computers is other people's computers are not wildly different from our own. So the experiences we create and experience in our own small space locally can be the same experience someone experiences in their small space locally on their computer. So this other people's computers idea isn't scary, isn't mysteriously technological. The cloud is not black magic. Uh, they do lots of fancy things with hardware to make it go fast or to give it lots of memory or to make lots of computers work together on the same problem. But other people's computers are just computers. Our work lives on on other people's computers. One of the most interesting pieces of this system for me and most exciting is that uh, it can live past my machine dying. Uh, I make a painting. I'm the only one who has access to it. I can sell it to somebody else. They can choose to hang it up somewhere. People can see it. There's still only one. It can't be shared endlessly at zero cost through copying. Digital works 
can be shared endlessly at zero cost by copying. And when they are on someone else's computer, oh no. When they're on someone else's, oh man, we missed a lot. When they're on someone else's computer, uh, <laughs> the copy is permanent. I'm still pretty bad at this. I apologize. Uh, all right. Let's talk about our code. This this section, this is like first of three things. Uh, this is all leading to the code. It's short. I got a bunch of slides. It's a short part of the presentation. Where is my code? How is it running? I want to talk about two questions uh, because this environment, P5.js, is so different from processing app. While the programming languages are similar, where my code is, how it's loaded, how it's executing, I want to at least paint the picture in very broad strokes so you can understand what's happening. First thing to do is, if you have access to a browser right now, I assume you do, uh, you can open up editor.p5js.org. If you follow that link, you're looking at something like this. P5.js web editor. I'm working on a sketch called Butter Knee. Uh, if you've got a minute, something you could do to make your life easier is create an account. I'll show you what that looks like for me. I have a mica.edu email address because I work for mica. You have a mica.edu email address because you attend mica. Or you don't. So you don't. Uh, sign up. Let's see. Oh man, this is going to make it hard on me, huh? Editor. I want to create an account. I don't want to do it with my Google. Oh, buddy. You let me do this yesterday. All right. Let's go for it. Uh, this. Okay, it's not a cat. Hey, Bachman at mica.edu yesterday they let me do this with a Google account I think they're messing with me if you have <laughs> oh man I run through these things as practice I take all the right steps uh, and they go and change things on me and it makes it makes the challenges new and the opportunities interesting and uh, the streams longer and a little more klutzy uh, but it's okay if you've got 10 minutes and a password uh, safe create yourself an account it'll make some of this stuff easier when you go to save and you have to be logged in I'm gonna come back over here oh look that's what it was it's not save account. Let me go back and try that again. Yes, we got this. Uh, Editor.p5js.org. This is worth doing. I'm running through it exhaustively because it's worth having an account. Part of the homework assignment is going to be creating a sketch and turning it in by sending me a link. So you will have to do this to share your work. Log in, log in with Google. Resolving host, establishing secure connection. Other people's computers are running slow at the moment. We'll get there. We'll get there. This editor.p5.js, by the way, is open source. Uh, you can go find it on GitHub and contribute. I'm going to pick my mica.edu email address. I'm going to hit my password. Chrome remembers. Cool. All right. It signed me in. If you have not created an account in the past, 
that login with Google will create an account for you. It will attach to your MICA email address. Everything's a little bit simpler. Log in with Google. Now that I'm not in an incognito browser, still overwhelming P5 JS because you're all visiting at the same time. So we're like causing them stress. Other people's computers. There's not that many. There's only a few. I'm going to pick the account that has my sample code in it. All right. That's great. It's a gray square. My favorite sketch. Hello world. All right. Editor p5js.org. <laughs> I just make it look hard. It's not actually that hard. Where is my code? All right. In this sketch, I can see some code. Uh, I have an iPhone and I don't know how to mute the ringer. Ask me anything. I can see some code. I can run it. But is this it? I see a word here, sketch.js. I can make everything bigger. And I see a little arrow, a little arrow here. This slideshow tells me is a key. Aha, sketch files. I have three files in my sketch. It looks like I have sketch.js. I have index.html and I have style.css. Let me see if I can hide the preview. I can't hide the preview. All right. I pop it open. I see my three files. Sketch.js, index.html, style.css. Our code lives in sketch.js, which is probably obvious from seeing the screenshots. But that's where it lives. Index.html is where we talk about libraries and it's where our sketch gets loaded up and run by the browser. If you're using Chrome or Firefox or Edge or Opera or Brave, that's your browser or your Android, whatever. I don't know. That's your browser. Safari, name browsers game, Net, Netscape Navigator. <clears throat> That's your browser, index.html is the first thing that gets loaded. And let's see, in this example, it says, I'm an HTML document. Here are some scripts you should know about. Uh, that long piece of work is p5.js, it looks like. This long piece of work is p5.sound.min.js. In our processing sketches, uh, real quick, we'll see these. We'll see these examples a few minutes later. If we were going to talk about video, we saw this line of code: import processing video, and now we're able to talk about video. If we want to talk about sound, we saw this: import processing sound. In JavaScript, you can't just say import processing.sound.star. That code has to come from somewhere. It might be on your computer already. You'll talk about it one way and we can look at some example projects that have code living on our computer. Or in this case, the code lives somewhere else. Uh, this big piece of work called a URL, we can just pull that out, stick it in our browser, and find it. I can't read this. I can't do anything with it, but it's just plain text. It's all JavaScript. It's run through a squisher, a, a thing called a minifier uh, to make it small, to make it use the fewest number of characters necessary. Uh, but this is it. This is all of the P5.js sound library. If we want to see P5.js itself, let's see how 
much there is there. It's probably going to be real big. I wonder what Chrome's going to do with it. Oh, look, it's not even miniaturized. I would bet there's about five megabytes of JavaScript here. P5.js is pretty big. Uh, yeah, Chrome's having a hard time, so I'm going to quit that. But it's all there. Index.html loads P5.js, loads a library, and then it loads our code. Style.css adds style to the page around our sketch. In this case, in the case of a plain blank P5.js sketch, it's almost nothing. In fact, if I deleted this file, my sketch still runs. Unless you are interested in web development or uh, user interface design on the web, you can completely ignore this file or just throw it away. But our code lives in sketch.js. So that's the only file we're going to be thinking about when we're working. So I'm not going to talk about how JavaScript works and is interpreted by the browser, but I want to talk about the conversation. Uh, when we looked at our internet is a wire picture last week, uh, I'm not going to go to the whiteboard. When we talked about our internet as wire uh, last week, we saw a drawing. It had a box that said client, a box that said server, and two arrows connecting them. This is the conversation, the conversation that underlies kind of everything you do in your browser on the internet. With limited exceptions, everything comes down to this conversation. In this case, the client is my computer. When you look at this picture and see client, it's your computer. Uh, somebody who's going to visit your sketch and see it on the internet, client is their computer. There is not one client, there is every client. Everyone's computer, when they go onto the internet and browse to a web page, they are the client. There is, however, one server one server that has my sketch living on it dormant that we can all visit <clears throat> and see the code we all get the same thing we'll see because the conversation the client starts the conversation the server doesn't know where the client is where it's coming from or when it's going to ask the question but the client always asks the same question first do you have a document for me uh, the client uses a word called get. Literally, a piece of text is the first thing that the client creates and sends to the server, and it's the word get. Do you have a document for me? The server says, yes, I do. What luck. I'm glad you asked. Uh, something you should know about me is I love anthropomorphizing these characters uh, and... <clears throat> While it's a boring job, I think the server loves its job. So the server says, yes, here's an HTML file. Uh, client doesn't really care what it's named. Server just reads it off over the wire. The wire, the internet. Now client has an exact copy of index.html. Server didn't lose it. It didn't give it away. It made a copy. It read it off over the wire. Now client has it. Client reads index.html. If we go and look at index.html, we can read it too. Uh, there's like this angle bracket, an exclamation point, blah, blah, blah. Client is a browser. It knows how to deal with this stuff. But along the way, it sees this. Source. <laughs> One of the qualities, you remember, three qualities of every great programmer, impatience, hubris, laziness, because we're lazy. Uh, we don't want to say source. That would be too many characters. We say source. Why we say script and not skt or skt. I don't know, but we say script. 
and we say Circe. And Circe has the name of a different file in a different place. And there's another one, another name of a file in a different place. And another one. Uh, style sheets are funny because they don't say script. They don't say style. They say link rel style sheet type text CSS href equals href. That's another way of saying search. Uh, style.css. There are more files. Client says, I read index.html and I don't think this is it. Get more things for me. It's a little bit demanding, but that's okay. This is client's job. This is server's job. They know each other means well. And server's excited to capitulate. Huzzah! I have many things. So it sends over copies of everything. Sketch.js, index.html, style.css. Once client, once client has everything, the work can begin. The, everything lives in the browser on your computer. On this case, on my computer. Uh, if I share a link to this sketch, it will be on your computer. I'm going to minify this a little bit. The browser where your code lives and is being executed is on someone else's computer. Now, it's not just these three files. Uh, a page like the p5.js editor, I want to I wanna show you this. Because this is also the wild thing about how all this works. There's the library. There's maybe there's a cat image. Uh, there's another library. Uh, there's a little icon. When you see this little picture in your tab, that's called a favicon. That gets shipped over when you make requests. Uh, there's another library. It's all building up. Uh, yeah, I wanted to say. I wanted to show if you are on a Mac using Chrome, you can hit hold down option command and J and you can pop open the developer toolbar down here at the bottom. I'm going to click on the network tab. I'm going to, let's see, hit all. I'm going to clear things out. I'm going to hit refresh. We're going to see how many files come across the wire. Changes you made may not be saved. I don't care. All right. To look at my P5.js sketch in the P5.js editor, uh, I had to make 34 requests. Uh, let's see. My face is covering a little bit. 34 requests. 154 kilobytes transferred. Uh, the number is actually bigger than that, probably. Well, let's see. Empty cache and hard reload. It's going to take a second. Ooh, that was more than 34 requests. That was 69 requests. Nice. Uh, 952 kilobytes transferred. 5.4 megabytes of resources. Why are those different? Because when servers ship you text, they don't just ship it over letter by letter. They zip it. They make it. They compress it a little bit and send it. So almost a megabyte of content transferred over. What are the file names on that content? Uh, oh, it's not going to let me see. These file names. Oh, there we go. Are named things like. <laughs> they are not even pronounceable words. They look like SHA-1 signatures. They're probably using Webpack. They're probably using React. All these SVG images. Whew, boy, I am not even going to try to wrap my head around that. You don't have to either. I care about two files. Oh, three files. It, it reappeared. <laughs> I care about three little files. And you have to, you should only either sketch.js, index.html, style.css. That's a p5.js sketch. At the end of the day, the conversation includes other things. When we want a library, we'll have to put that in the right place. All right, review, because I want to start writing code. 
someone has the idea to go visit a site on the internet, their browser, because they typed in the address or clicked the link you gave them, makes a request to your server. In this case, uh, the P5JS editor here. Let's do this. I'm going to make a change so it'll be obvious that it's my sketch. I'm going to do like a, is this like a fuchsia? It's uh, it's uh, not quite bright enough. I want like a bright. Oh, that's good. That's close enough. Uh, when I share Atlantic Brain share present edit when I share an edit link into the class discord and you click on the edit link this lives on my server right now somebody else owns it somebody else paid for it but I control the code that your machine gets so in this case this is my server Which is actually, yeah. it's someone else's computer. Who would have thought? Your server uh, responds with code. The browser makes more requests. In this case, uh, somebody could pop open the toolbar, the developer console, and see how many requests happen when you visit that presentation link. I would guess more like 20, not 60. Some to your server, some to other servers. Uh, once all the code is in their browser, the browser executes the JavaScript. If you want to know how that works, uh, Mozilla has a great set of documents describing that. The Mozilla Developer Network, JavaScript. It's easy to find information about JavaScript. People who make things for the web tend to write about the things, and they're already on the web, so they just publish them. And then finally, the goal of every generative interactive artist. Your sketch. <sighs> Let's see. Can you all still see me? My Twitch stream manager is showing me an error message. Oh, good. OK, good. Phew. Your sketch mediates reality in a way that causes the visitor to call into question every life choice that has led them to this point. Maybe you're glitching an image of a cat like we're going to do later. Oh, thank you, uh, Ty. Maybe you are uh, doing some sweet data visualization on COVID-19 patterns. Maybe you're modeling a new and better universe, but they're running your sketch. They're experiencing the thing you set out for them to experience. Cool. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. These are instructions for adding a sketch to the P5JS editor. I'm going to hide the player on Twitch. I'm worried that, let me know if it goes offline or something. Uh, I'm going to drop a screenshot into Discord so I can get this slide off the screen. Uh, and I'm going to take those three, I'm going to go through three demo sketches, the things I talked about at the beginning. We'll get to this. Don't worry about dropping a link in chat just yet. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about glitch today because I think that would cause a little bit of chaos and confusion. Glitch does just about everything P5JS does. Uh, but does it at a lower level? P5JS thinks about how processing sketches run and how to share processing sketches uh, under the hood deep down processing sketches are little tiny web pages 
Glitch lets you make little tiny web pages very easily. But we're not going to do that today. All right, I'm going to switch over to code. I'm going to mention the three sketches we're going to work on. Uh, then I want to take like a five minute break before I jump in. Give myself a drink of water. Give you all a chance to uh, take a break. So let's see. First, Wandering Painters. This was from session. I don't remember which session. <coughs> Wandering Painters. Session four. I shouldn't care. I shouldn't care. Uh, like session four, Wandering Painters. This was early on our one of our first introductions to arrays to lists wandering painters second thing we're going to work with images this sketch was uh where we started glitching playing with loading an image and glitching it a little bit i'm i'm telling you the sketches i'm using in case you want to go find them on the class creative coding website uh, session five uh, nope yeah session five working with images this was our working with images sketch session five session four wandering painters session five example one working with images and then session six Sound measurement. Let's see. Let's see if this sketch still runs with all my other stuff connected to uh, OBS and streaming to Twitch. Hello, hello, test check. I don't know which microphone is picking it up, but somebody is. Good, okay, good. So in preparation for today, in preparation for today, come on now. I made sure that I was able to convert wandering painters and I made sure that I was able to convert working with images. But in the interest of giving a demonstration of what it takes to like start from nothing, not knowing anything, I've never worked with a P5JS sound library. I've, I'm fairly confident we'll be able to sort it out using examples and reproduce this sketch exactly inside the browser. So you're going to see me work through these three things. Uh, I'm going to take a five minute break. When we come back, we're going to write some code. So if you wanted to get ready to write code with me, you could grab those sketches from the class uh, code repository, open up a p5.js editor. All right. See you all in about five minutes.
All right, I'm back. One minute early. All right. This is this is weird for all of us. It's uh, particularly strange for me to be doing this. What normally I would be able to do with a lot of feedback from you all watching, uh, I'm doing my best to track. Uh, I'm doing my best to track feedback in real time. You can hit me. I don't know that I will see every chat message that comes across Twitch, but I've got it open and I'm looking. Discord is the best place. I want to put that link up on screen. So anybody who does not know where it is can find it. There's a Discord invite. And it looks like this. Oh, that's way too much. Come on now. There we go. All right. That's the Discord invite link. Feel free to stop by the class chat room. I can't promise I'll answer your questions if you are not actually in my class, but you might as well stop by. Who knows? Maybe this stream will keep going. Unlikely. Uh, but it's possible. Anyway, this is a weird scenario for all of us. So please stop me if you have questions. Ask a question in the class chat room. Uh, DM me on Discord. I don't think you can D, uh, private message me on Twitch. Maybe you can. But stop me. Have me go over something another time. Let's see. I'm showing Vivek says Twitch is buffering a lot, extremely hard to follow. I think it is my internet. I think uh, I can take a quick look. Twitch says I've got pretty excellent upload. So if you're having trouble, like you're getting buffering and pauses, uh, feel free to pause. Just pause this stream. I don't know. I don't know how Twitch will handle that. Uh, you may have to wait until the video is posted up and saved, which I assume on Twitch will be almost as soon as this is done. I'm already a week behind getting these videos up on YouTube, or I'd say skip over there. Uh, be doing my best. These things end up about three to four gigabytes once they're done, so it takes my internet a little bit to upload to YouTube, but. Man, I wish we were in one room. We're not in one room, so we make do. Thank you, Vivek, for letting me know. Uh, we'll all do our best. But I'm going to move kind of quick. I'm going to try to talk through what I'm thinking out loud. Uh, I'm going to try not to make any leaps without speaking them. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, and it sounds like you can DM me on Twitch S forward slash W and okay, it's not a cat. Ian, thank you for the tip. Uh, there's a way to whisper chat me on Twitch if you need to for some reason. Cool. I'm going to walk through these three sketches. I'm going to try to talk out loud about what I'm doing, uh, decision I'm, decisions I'm making. Hopefully going to hit some bumps. I have to back up and try again. You'll see kind of the whole process of mistakes. Uh, these three amplify in complexity. We'll get there. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to select all and copy. 
I'm going to get a new sketch in the P5JS editor. It's called Sage Oriole, and I'm going to call it uh, Converting Wandering Painters. There's Converting Wandering Painters. I'm going to select all. I'm going to paste. And I'm going to run it. So it should just, ah, OK. Uncaught syntax error, unexpected identifier. There's a lot of errors. I know there's a lot of errors. And I think you probably know there's a lot of errors because we've seen this before. So one thing I'm going to pop open here is my guide that I, uh, uh, the trail of breadcrumbs I left for myself last week. Converting a sketch from processing app, which is Java, to P5.js. Uh, convert all types to let. Uh, I'm going to amplify this note. Like int float color. Cool. Save those changes. So. Convert all types to let like int float color. Cool. In this case, I think those are all I got. Int uh, let. I'm just going to copy that. Let, 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 let. Let's see. Uh, void is a type. But I don't think I want to convert that to let. That's all right. Let uh, void. No, let. In void. All right. In the P5JS editor, you remember processing app. If you want to run your sketch, you hit Command R. Or if you're on a Windows computer, you hit Control R. In the P5JS web editor, you hit Command Enter. Start sketch. Command Enter. Uncaught syntax error. Unexpected token. All right. This is the thing. This is the thing that I know about code, uh, JavaScript in particular. Java, where processing is coming from, cares a lot about the types of things. And when we cut, get to lists, arrays, lists of things, it wants to know what type each thing in the list is. So the whole list is only one type of thing. I know JavaScript is dynamic. A little more flexible when it comes to that. So JavaScript doesn't care about what type of thing there is. It only cares that it's a list. So this uncaught syntax error, unexpected token, line 13, is because JavaScript doesn't know what this means. That this y is going to be a list of something. In JavaScript, I can just say this. So this is going to make the code a little bit cleaner. All right. Void. Oh, all right. So this is a new this is a new piece. Ah, uh, this is a markdown, so we don't actually need to put the numbers. Markdown will take care of it for us. One dot. One dot. Leaving breadcrumbs for yourself like this is probably the most helpful thing you could do in your career as somebody working with code. Uh, how did I do that? Because uh, a lot of stuff you're only going to do once, or you're only going to do once every six months, uh, or you're only going to learn once. Just leave yourself some breadcrumbs. And maybe on the way, you leave some hints for someone else. Uh, arrays in JavaScript don't have a type. Int x becomes let x equal array. Cool. All right, save these notes. Cool. So these are lists. Uh, I know this is familiar. Convert void to function. Uh, I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed with myself. Only because the formatting is gross and I don't like it. For example, for example, 
Cool. All right. When converting functions, void becomes function. All right. There's a sketch we have later where it's not going to be void, but the conversion is going to be the same. Uh, void becomes function. And it looks like this editor is pretty good about telling me something's wrong. Unexpected token. Curly brace. Oh, I forgot one. Good. Sketch line 43. I look for line 43. I hover. Look at that. I hover. It's red. It says missing semicolon. What? That's not quite it. Oh, it like folds it up. That's cute. Run the sketch. Size is not defined. Convert size to create canvas. Right, right. It's all coming back to me. Boom. All right. Beautiful. It worked. Uh, let's see. Is that right? It's big. Uh, that obviously is not quite it. Something's missing here. Let's see what's different. All right. So I say length 3000. Uh, I make three lists. And I, ooh, I want to fill these lists. And I want to fill them with 3000 things. So in my old processing sketch, I was able to declare an array and give it a length. In P5JS, I just create an empty array. So there are two ways I could fix this, I think. The way that I know of is I'm going to do this. Instead of generating a list with 3,000 empty slots in it. I'm going to generate an empty list and add 3,000 things to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is say while i is less than length. Can I add, let's see, let's see if that works. Hey, it works. Honestly, did not expect it to work. Pretty glad. Oh, I can make it go away. Look at that. Uh, kind of amazing that it did. I want to make this smaller so it fits inside my window. I'm going to do a few less items because it's smaller. That's what I'm talking about. So I start with an empty list. I add things to it. I have been writing JavaScript for more than 10 years. And I didn't know this was even legal. I thought I had to say push. OK. <laughs> Let's go get it, JavaScript. It's a little more fluid and flexible than I expected. But that looks like my sketch. That looks like my sketch. Uh, let's see. What happens here? Save frame is not defined. Ooh. I wonder what we can do. All right. So something I did not mention, but is true, if you can see my browser there on the tab bar, is before I started writing any code, I had the reference open. Uh, you can get to the reference from the help menu in the editor, but I got the reference open. And I want to search the reference and see if there's something like save canvas. Ooh, that sounds promising. Save canvas. Note that this example has the same. If no canvas specified, defaults to main canvas. OK. Let's try. Uh, save frame. No, no, no. Save canvas. And it looked like a file name and a file ending. Or just a file name with the ending. Simple. Ooh, look. Hey, it's my screenshot. This is much easier. This is much easier than taking screenshots. Bam, it pops up. Ooh, all right. Let me save. Nope. Save. Oh, I'm saving all kinds of screenshots. Uh, and then I'm going to share it in the classroom. I'm going to share the editor and see what that does for you. Drop that in Discord. You can pop it open. 
you can run the sketch yourself. All right, one conversion down. That was about 15 minutes, a little less than 20 minutes. That's good. Learned a few things. Uh, yeah, cool. Create canvas, was there anything else? Uh, use that length out there. Over here, we don't have to change to, well, i is less than length because presumably this list is now as long as. Didn't have to touch colors. Uh, didn't have to touch the point, the stroke weight, random. That worked all right. The walking uh, algorithm, the random walk algorithm, is exactly the same. We're good. I'm going to call that one done. New sketch. All right. One down, two to go. Let me, let me actually, I want to open that one up again, converting watering painters, because uh, I saved myself a little place. I use an editor these days uh, called VS Code, and I'm going to put these sketches up. Let me see. On the class directory, so that... So you remember, other people's computers, the code lives on other people's computers. The P5.js editor is cool because they worry about where the code goes, how it's stored, what computer it's on, how long it lasts, who can get to it. I don't have to care about any of that. They make sharing easy. They make editing pretty easy and nice. Uh, if you have a text editor you particularly like, you can use that. And for the sake of having all the code we produce in class in one place, I'm also going to put it inside the uh, GitHub repository. So the sketch, I just converted an index.html that I got off of the p5.js editor. Alternatively, and maybe even better, let me show you this. Uh, download. Click on that downloaded zip file. Download directory. It's full up. There are five files here. I'm not going to pull all of them because, like I said, that p5.js file is pretty big. But I can copy sketch.js. Look at all those folders. I can go to session 11, I can go to Wandering Painters, and I can drop it in. Paste item, replace. If you want to do that download and see the sketch run, you're looking at P5.js editor, you created a download, it gave you an index.html, it's huge, it's almost six megabytes of code but you got it this here is not running on someone else's computer it's running in a browser on my very own computer cool all right digression we're good p5js conversions new sketch we're going to do a little bit of light image glitching working with images cool 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 all right same thing. Uh, I'm going to get some types. I'm not going to be doing any video here. Maybe we'll do some video next week. Might try some video this afternoon. If somebody's interested in seeing some video, we can try pulling it up. But for now, we'll cut the video out. No capture. I'm going to run from top to bottom with the changes I remember. Those changes were all types become let arrays. If we run into an array, uh, arrays don't have a type. Convert void to function, size to create canvas, and, oh, this was funny, putting color inside of setup. I haven't seen any colors yet. A void to function, size to create canvas. Let 
function. Let let p image is a type. Uh, for example, int float color p image, and I know. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Sound sound sketch may give us some more. Let 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 ah, uh, here we go. Rand int. So this is a function that returns a value. We're gonna say function because in JavaScript functions don't care what type they are going to return. They just care that they are a function. So we say function and then function. Ooh. Function rand int. We did a trick here in processing Java that won't work in JavaScript, but it's kind of okay because I don't think these functions are used. I'm going to command C to copy that. I'm going to paste it into the find and it's used. There's a definition for this function, but we don't actually use it in code. So I'm just going to delete it. I'm not going to waste my time converting functions that I don't use. All right. And let's run command enter. Nothing. What happened? It looks like there was a problem. Oh, all right. It looks like there was a problem loading your image. Try checking if the file path is correct. Question mark, hosting the image online or running a local server. Uh, those kind of sound complicated and I bet the editor will help me with that. I remember when I opened this sidebar, I saw a drop down list. Upload file. Okay. Uh, Thomas, oh, buddy. Uh, I'm going to go back to the processing sketch I'm converting. And I am going to open up the sketch folder. Command K for those playing via keyboard. Working with images data. Ooh, there it is. That's big, beautiful mountain image. Uh, nope. Oh, yeah, I can do that. They're pretty big, 255 kilobytes, about 0.3 megabytes. Load, does it work? It works. It just works. All right. Oh, that was dead simple. Uh, but I want to leave a note in on editor.p5js.org. Uh, you can upload files and then use them in the sketch. For example, with load image file name. Cool. As long as the file in the editor, let's see, rename. Night Mountain. Boom. Sketch.js console is going to be yelling at me about files not existing. Yeah, looks like there's a problem. Cool. Uh, Night Mountain. Cool. As long as the file name here in my editor matches the file name in my sketch files. Uh, it's just, it's 
so it's super huge and you can see the thing I'm looking at. Over here in sketch files, I got a file name nightmountain.jpg. Over here in my sketch, I load image. Can't scroll sideways. Load image nightmountain.jpg. Great. That's it. That's all it took. That one was quicker. Uh, we got pretty complex. Some people got pretty complex with these uh, glitch sketches. I would love to see somebody take a run at converting. Uh, Vivek in particular, yours did some super weird tricks with uh, layering and effects, and I'm curious what the browser does uh, or what P5.js has. Uh, I bet we could get all the way there. Uh, and if you have source that you would like to see converted, maybe during the Zoom session, feel free to like uh, drop me a link in Discord and we can work on it. But I'm going to leave that one behind. Uh, let's see. I want to save. I want to share. Drop it in chat. And I want to download thoughtful durian, thoughtful durian converting image glitch. Thoughtful durian is a good name for a sketch, but I'm going to call it converting image glitch. So I'm able to find it on a timestamp and everything. Ooh. Bringing it local. It did not like it. Ah, uh, okay. Here's the thing that browsers do to protect you and I from malevolent or malicious people on the internet. So something that a browser can do uh, take a URL every file on your computer has a URL associated with it URL just means uniform resource locator every file on your computer is a resource it has an address it's the only file in that place therefore the address is enough to uniquely identify it because you can reach any file on your computer buy a URL. If I'm a crafty hacker, I can give you a piece of HTML that will load any file on your computer into the browser. If I'm a crafty hacker who knows P5.js or just any JavaScript framework or no framework at all, just JavaScript by itself, if I can load a file on your computer into the browser, and I can use the browser to send data out of your computer, I can steal any file on your computer. So the browser vendors, this case Firefox, uh, I think we'll see the same thing if we try to open it in Chrome. The browser vendors fight that. Fetch API cannot load. URL scheme must be HTTP or HTTPS for cores request, cross origin request scripting. Uh, it's a security feature that the browser creators added to their browsers that protects us. It's annoying because it means I can't download my code from the P5.js web editor and run it on my machine without starting up a web server. And suffice to say, that's a little more trouble than it's worth. So we'll leave it up here. I linked to the editor. Uh, I got the sketch code here. I want to put the sketch code in the class folder. And I'm going to get that. I want to get that image file in this folder too. Night Mountain. Uh, no, working with images. Ooh, I'll put this in the wrong place. Working with images. Cool. 
sketch night mountain great great we are rolling ah uh, save all right cool two down uh less than 40 minutes i think we're gonna finish this last one under 30 get out of here by six o'clock go eat dinner come back on zoom ask and answer questions more code all right last demonstration sketch and i suspect uh trickiest of these i don't see anything in chat yet so i'm gonna keep rolling we're doing good uh sound measurement this one is going to be complex because we're going to use the sound library it is interesting to me that p5.js and the p5.js editor when i pop open a new sketch uh, let me close these and leave the reference automatically loads up this p5 sound.min.js it's curious to me that it loads the sound library first uh, or without me asking but that's good it probably means their examples work a little better uh, all right i'm going to do two things this time i'm going to do something that i didn't do uh, when i was working on the other sketches i'm going to open up an example from the reference with a microphone and some sound reactive code i want to bring i want to bring my sketch in and eventually convert it exactly so i'm going to start that uh, converting that's not it converting sound input and i'm going to leave it in a broken state i know there are things that i need to do to make this work but i'm going to leave it broken while I go over to the reference libraries because I'm using a library now and not just code that's built into p5.js I'm going to open it up separately and sound top of the list uh, sound file audio in get sound from an input source this is good and amplitude I'm going to open up two tabs and it looks like we're on the right track the oh look this tab is using your camera or microphone i had to give it permission i assume at some point you may not have to give it permission uh, or sorry you may still have to give it permission i didn't have to give it permission this time uh, chrome is very friendly this page is accessing your microphone uh, if i click on it i can continue i can block I can manage it's using internal microphone built in so that's the microphone if I tap my poor MacBook my poor overworked computer uh, that seems to respond and if I talk loud directly at it I can make that ball bounce up and down this is good this is great I can't change the microphone that I use. That's interesting, but it's okay. It pulled the default and it works. I see it. This code is working. All right. I'm curious about this here. I'm real curious about this here. And we'll, we'll, we'll work on it. And our sketch may be even easier. We'll see. So this is reference audio in and amplitude I don't hear anything where is this coming out headphones okay okay uh, so the amplitude get level get level this is going to be even easier i have a i have i'm i'm looking at this and here's what i see the library here uh is doing some different things with drawing but it's almost 
the th same process that I had to use two libraries to get. So I'm gonna, uh, to start the microphone and use it as an input source, a sound source, and to send it to the amplitude library, which measured the amplitude. Uh, in this case, toggle sound P5 amplitude level, level toggle sound. <laughs> The amplitude is different from the sound file, but all I care about is this get level. Turns a single amplitude reading at the moment it is called. This sound input. I can just call get level by itself. Read the amplitude of an audio in. All right, so I'm doing a lot of reading. Uh, the part of being a programmer that you don't get to see in class, because like me and probably anybody else who teaches this stuff, we've done it before, we read the documentation before we started, I get up in front of class, and it kind of looks like I've memorized everything and know everything. Uh, maybe it doesn't, it probably doesn't. I'm a real schlub most of the time. Uh, but what I actually spend about a quarter to a half of my day doing is reading the rules of somebody else's programming system. Those rules in this case are reference, documentation, uh, examples, other people's example code. So the two things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the reference, I'm gonna grab some example code. I'm gonna come over to my example. I'm gonna see if I can, no, converting sound input. Uh, that's all right. I'm gonna make sure that tab is right next door. Cool. Reset, copy. No, I don't wanna, I don't need to copy it. It's all good. This is good. All right, get rid of that. I don't care. Get rid of this. You know what? I'm gonna leave it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna comment it out. I hit command forward slash. That added comments. That's just like the processing editor. Uh, all right. Function again and again. Only way you get to memorize this stuff is by doing it again and again. Create canvas. Is that right? Uh, size. Create canvas. Ooh, I'm getting hungry. We're gonna we're gonna finish this though. Input new audio in. How did they do this? New P5 dot audio in. Okay, cool, cool. I'm gonna just copy this out. And uh, let me see. I'm gonna I'm gonna. Okay, P5 dot audio in. And I don't need to say this or zero. And they say start, and I say start. I don't need to do anything. Uh, get rid of amplitude. I think I think somewhere in the library, the authors made the authors of this library made a different choice. Uh, that is, the JavaScript side of processing made a different set of choices than the uh, processing Java people. One of the decisions I think they made. And I'm just guessing by reading this code, by doing this conversion, I think they've decided that somebody who's starting the microphone is going to do something with the amplitude. So we could look at some more complex ways. I'll look at at least one more. If this sketch goes in like 10 minutes, five minutes, I'll look at one slightly more complex thing we can do. Another type, call it let. I want to see if we can get the frequencies out, get like our like spectrum bandwidth uh, uh, the different bands low end mid-range high end which won't mean a lot with a laptop microphone but 
we can try it. We can play with it. Uh, volume. Oh, this was this was okay. This was our mic dot get level. Uh, I used a different name. I called it input. So let me paste this in. Mic level. I used the word volume, and I said uh, call it input. Just input dot get level. Let's see. I don't know what this value looks like, and I'm curious. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Volume, stroke, stroke, stroke. All right. Editor.p5js.org wants to use your microphone. Is it? It's using it. All right. So I think I think. So nothing's happening. This is interesting. This is good. I ran my code and I expected something to happen. Uh, but I also expected a little bit that nothing might happen, which is fine. Because if this number is really tiny, then this number will be really tiny. And this number will be really tiny. And the circle will be really tiny. It's a little interesting to me that Okay. Okay. No, this is good. Height minus mic level times height. Ooh. Okay. Well, mic level times height. Let's do that. Uh, volume equals. All right. Volume equals volume times height. Command enter. Hello. Who? There we are. All right, these sketches are hard to see when they're so big. That's it, that looks like. All right, just see, uh, yeah. Uh, test, hello. How's it going? Hello, check, test. Oh, it's very small, okay, even the peaks. I can't make it go much bigger. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute myself real quick and make a loud noise and see how big I can make that circle. That is too much volume. I want it I want it to be a little more responsive. Uh, I had to whistle. I had to straight up whistle at my laptop to make a circle that big. Uh, so I'm gonna say times two. I'm gonna double that. Hello, check test times 20 hello now now it's okay that's a little much hello can you hear me hello internet I'm drawing a green circle with my voice good I like <laughs> uh, my streaming tools are making my laptop fan spin permanently so this whole thing has a weird audio background track of whispering computer fans and we can see that in the data cool all right that's 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 our boy that's our sketch that's it uh let's pull up the processing sketch. I want to see them both. See if they can both run at the same time. Or are they going to fight over microphones? Hello, can you hear me? Uh, let's see. Let's. I want to. I want to see if I can. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, eight hundred. Let's go sixteen hundred. Double. Oh, and I'm going to make that window smaller. Four hundred. Four hundred. New sketch, meet old sketch, it's the same sketch. It looks like the browser maybe is a little more stuttery. Might be a buffering issue with the microphone. Might be a frame rate issue. I would I would blame the microphone, blame the audio stream for that one, but uh, browser on the right, P5.js, 
processing on the left. I'd call that a conversion. All right, uh, let's see, what were the steps I took? Before I wander off and start poking at this thing, uh, sketch.js, I wanna stick that in, you know, here, I wanna see this one. I wanna see if this one I can download. Converting sound, dot zip, it's huge. Converting sound input, index.html. Uh, local, will you allow unknown origin to use your microphone? The file is on my my dang computer. Microphone share, allow. Hello. Ooh. That microphone is much more sensitive than my laptop. But there it is. Uh, if I wanted to change that, I would open it with Visual Studio Code make that a little bit less sensitive. This is interesting. This is interesting uh, because remember this. All right, that's a little less sensitive. It's running the code with the uh, reduced multiplier. Converting sound input 20 blah, blah, blah. Uh, so here's an interesting problem. Uh, an interesting problem I did not have when I was an interactive arts creative coding developer. Like all of you, uh, inside a classroom using my laptop, using my hardware to produce a piece of work that other people can interact with. When I'm creating work for installation, for example, kind of what we were gonna do, we were gonna make our projects, we were gonna show them off in class. When I'm creating work for installation, I control the hardware. So I can design my sketch to use multipliers, to use parameters like this uh, times eight. to make sure that when my sketch receives input, it moves across a wide range. Uh, in this case, when I'm running the sketch and the microphone that's being shared is the laptop microphone, I use a high multiplier. When I put this sketch, run this sketch off my machine and I pick a better microphone it's more sensitive. My multiplier was too big. The sketch did interesting work outside the boundaries of the frame, which is certainly an aesthetic decision you could make. But if you want somebody else to have the same experience on your, their machine that you have on your machine, you will need to take into account, uh, especially with something like a microphone or a camera, that their hardware may be more or less sensitive. So. I'm not going to try to solve that problem right here, but it's interesting that there's a problem here. There's some tension. Uh, when I share this sketch, I give up some control. I, well, that's interesting. They look the same. Maybe, maybe the laptop got loud. When I share my work online and the only way to experience it is to download it from someone else's computer to your own computer. Uh, when I share my work that way, I lose some control over how it's experienced, particularly with respect to inputs and the, the scale that an input could cover. So I would be looking during the course of running this sketch, I would be looking for the proper multiplier here. I would be kind of scaling the response of my sketch to the uh, level of the input. Whew. It's a lot easier said than done. A lot easier said than done. All right, last thing I said I wanted to poke at. You know, it's already 540. Uh, place that would be interesting to go would be to pop open the sound library and look at FFT, which you know what? Let's go get it. 
because what I want to do is copy this code and I think it'll work. All right, I got my circle and I want to find setup and I want to say let FFT. So I'm creating a thing. I don't care what type it is, but I know I want to use it in setup and in draw. So I put it on the outside and then I'm going to straight copy paste. Because I'm pulling out a JavaScript, going into JavaScript will probably work. The Y value scaled to height. What do we got? Hello, check, test. Ooh, but the stroke is super dark. I want it to be super bright. Hello, check, test. Oh, okay. How do I tie them together? Uh, FFT. FFT dot waveform. Did I FFT dot analyze? I wonder. That might be it. I wonder if I have to call this first. Let's try that. I'm gonna I'm taking pieces out of somebody's example code. I want to take just enough pieces for it to work. What I'm thinking here is I want to analyze the sound as slices of uh, frequencies, low frequencies, low pitch sound on one side, high frequencies, high pitch sound on the other side. The only piece of knowledge I came in with was this is something the sound library is going to do. And a common name for this is FFT, Fast Fourier Transforms. Uh, I don't know what it means. It's fancy math. It has something to do with calculus and the dynamic of a slice of a set of values, uh, how things change. I grab the waveform and I draw it. My code shows the waveform, but it's drawing a dead flat line. Something's not changing. I don't think it's reading the sound. I don't think it's reading the current state of the sketch and the sound that's playing in the browser. In this case, it's my input, my sound input. So I wonder actually if this will do some wave stuff for me. Set amplitude, set source, no, get sources connect. No, okay, cool, cool, cool. I think I think this will this may I'm curious I may not be able to get it to work uh, but nope I'm gonna bring in this analyze see if that does anything different hello check test it does not input okay it's worth taking it's worth taking a minute or two longer but I don't want to take too long analysis algorithm that isolates individual audio frequencies within a waveform. Uh, smoothing bins set input. Ooh, yeah, here we go. Set input source. Okay. Better, better. FFT dot set input input. Hello. Oh, that's it. That's our boy. FFT dot set input. This code's all going to go up. So like none of this will be lost and you all will be able to play with it. I like this. Hello. Whoop. Boo. Whoop. Oh, whoop. Oh, oh. whoop. Cool. Okay. Sorry. That was my Carl Sagan karaoke moment. Good. Okay. I converted a sound measurement sketch. I dug a little bit into documentation and I found a way to get some more interesting stuff out. I 
was able to rely on my browser to give permission to use the microphone. Uh, I just skipped right over all the trouble we had with the processing app in class. And this is good. I'm getting rid of some old stuff, amplitude, don't care. I like it. I like it. All right. Save. Share. Copy to clipboard. Post it to Discord. Down. Uh, I'm just going to do this. Select all. Copy over my real editor. Find that sound measurement. Sketch. See if this runs. See, is it loading both libraries? Yep. P5 min. Sound min. Reveal in Finder. Right click. Reveal in Finder. What's it going to do for me? All right. It keeps insisting on opening these browsers in a different screen. Hello, check test. We are here. We are seeing code run. Good. This is recording sound right now. It's not sending it anywhere. The sound that is heard and responded to in this sketch is all happening on side on my computer. You can see it because I'm streaming it, but it's all happening inside my computer. Uh, yeah, all right. I'm going to push those sketches up. Uh, beep, beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. Make that a little smaller. Uh, source. I want to get rid of some of this stuff because it's noisy. Bash. Bash. RC plane. Cool. All right. CD mic. Uh, creative code. There's new source. So, uh, last thing I want to do before we split is point at the assignment talk about it for three minutes and then we'll take a break for an hour we'll leave 6 p.m eastern daylight time we'll get back i'm going to open up the zoom meeting uh probably about 6 45 you know what? i'm gonna eat dinner whenever i'm done with dinner i'm gonna open up the zoom meeting and uh mention in discord that i'm around and you can stop by and ask questions about this or about the homework or about the project uh life in general post covid experience of reality that we all share uh session 11 git add session 11 git ci add session 11 demos merge git push all right Git was unhappy that I made a bunch of changes online and didn't tell the local about it. Code. Session 11. There we go. We got our sketches. We can't run them inside GitHub. Uh, GitHub doesn't work like that. But we can see them. You can download them. That is a lot. That is a density of material that is unusual for internet videos. Uh, sadly, I do not have any of my consoles hooked up, so I can't play some Apex for you for the next 45 minutes. But I'm going to go away and eat. Oh, no, sorry. Assignment. I'm going to talk about the assignment, and then we're going to go away and eat dinner. All right. Today, assigned work. Assignment number six for the semester. Easy homework. This is this is not hurt yourself homework. You could probably if you've if you converted your own sketch while you were watching this stream, you've already finished the homework. This is about playing with a completely new tool. Other people's computers, the conversation, P5JS. 
This is it. This is all we want to do. I want you to convert one of the sketches you turned in for assignment two or three or that you worked on in class. This is, uh, I picked assignment two or three just because that's when we were getting a little more complex. That's when we were using setup and draw, things that move. Uh, for those of you that did push matrix, pop matrix, This is, this is not mentioned in anything we've hit yet. I should have looked at it. Push matrix and pop matrix in P5.js are called push and pop. Push saves current drawing style settings. Pop restores these settings. I wanna put this in the notes for session 10. Session 10, converting a sketch. Uh, that's a difference, but the homework assignment is to take one of the sketches you did in kind of the sweet spot for growing the complexity of what we were doing. You don't have to go all the way up to playing with images if you want, and I would love, if you want to take a stab at getting some camera code out of the examples folder into P5.js, that would be awesome. I may do that for fun just later on. Uh, and if you do not have any questions, great question, Kaylin. If you do not have any questions for me, enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, so assignment six, it's in the class Google Drive. I am going to email the slideshow I used today for presentation. I am going to email the assignment, both as PDFs to everybody in the class to make sure you have it. This video will be published on twitch.tv for another two weeks, and then it will be published to the class YouTube channel, uh, hopefully sooner than two weeks for that. And all I want out of this homework is an email with a link to your brand new P5.js sketch. So uh, feel free to join the Zoom meeting. I'll post the link in Discord when I'm coming back online. If you don't have any questions for me, enjoy your evening. Uh, do your best. Say hi to your family. Show them, show them by sharing links uh, the really cool stuff you're doing. Which, by the way, uh, now that I have said this out loud, I want to see it happen. Uh, I want to email myself my sketch link and run it on my mobile phone because uh, this is something processing app cannot do and maybe somebody who is on a mobile device right now or has discord on a mobile device I think I deleted it off mine uh, you can run these sketches on a mobile device. Me, sketch. It's an email from me to me. Open it up. <laughs> it's a little bit of di digression. Allow Firefox to record audio. Allow. Would you like to share your microphone with editor? Share. Oh my, I love this. I love the dang old internet. So this sketch that in a uh, processing app world would probably take me hours. I don't even know. I don't even know. It would probably take me hours and hours to figure out how to generate an Android package in Java, upload it to my phone. I've created a thing that works on my phone in a browser and not only on my phone, anybody's phone who can visit the link so uh that's freaking cool and if you don't think that's cool i don't know what to tell you man that's that's the best that is the best all right thank you all uh enjoy your dinner 
I'm going to leave this stream running and take myself off camera and mute everything just so that it's not as abrupt an end as a video call, which I would love to see somebody do some work on how weird it is to hang up a Zoom chat with your family. Thank you all, and I will see you online later or next week.